boots and gaiters. No, is it rolling? Yes. You see the arrows? Yes. Okay. Uh, the first time I ever saw the film was back in 1986 in uh, Poughkeepsie, New York. I uh, had a, a, a burst of inspiration to go shoot a film, something I'd always wanted, I'd always wanted to do, and uh, went out, got some money off some relative or some friend of some relative, and went to the Salvation Army and bought a, a cheap eight millimeter camera and then I bought some eight millimeter film and I shot this movie. It was a lot of fun. We had a really great time. Halloween day. Went down to Malcolm X Park in Poughkeepsie, New York. Shot something that's interesting. It was interesting. Unfortunately I never did see the final result. <laughs> um that was in 86 and gee a few years later, in 1990, I was uh, back in my hometown and I ran into an old school friend of mine named Michael Mahalis. And uh, he, he and I met each other when we were, you know, both seven years old. Uh, coming out of very similar situations, uh, dysfunctional family breakups. And, and I just happened to bump into him one day at the, the store that I was working at. And uh, we got to talking, and he mentioned that he had been uh, shooting films for about a year, taking a few film classes, etc. And, and I said, uh, hey, listen, I we would like to make a film. You know, I've been thinking about it for years and years. And, and uh, so we got together. We... Uh, rented a small garage right next to the apartment house where he was living and sooner than later I moved in along with him and uh, we built a very inexpensive set inside the uh, garage and shot our first movie which we entitled Fallen Angel. Ah, oh, that was your first one, okay. Yeah. And uh, it took us about three months to shoot. We would uh, you know, get together, party up the storm, have <laughs> have a few uh, things to inspire us, so to speak, and uh, we'd shoot various ideas. We did some video work, and, and uh, it took us about three three uh, three months to finally shoot about 15 minutes of film, and. Uh, then it took us another three months just to get a, get a rough edit of the film. And, uh... Ooh, this is tight. Yeah, over your sweater. And, uh, we did it. We, we shot my first movie. He had shot a few... Mike Mahalis had shot a few movies before that. But mm -hmm. That was my first Endeavor film that I had ever shot. I spent quite a few dollars on it making the set, bought a lot of stuff that I ended up throw, throwing away, but uh, it was my first all-time first film, and it was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, being amateur filmmakers, um, it didn't make any sense when we uh, finally had the 15 minutes of footage, you know, it, it just was a unintelligible sequence of events. And uh, a number of years later, of course, after we showed it to people, people gave us their true heartfelt commentary that, hey guys, it doesn't make any sense, what the hell is it all about? So a couple of years later, when I moved to Maryland, I finally re-edited the film and uh, cut it down to about seven minutes, which doesn't look half bad, really. You know, it looks okay. And uh, since then, I've been working with a person by the name of Joseph Balin, who himself has been shooting home movies, hours and hours, hundreds of hours of home movies. You know, he has a lot of experience with a camera and a lot of experience using a camera. I moved in with him 
and uh, I noticed that he had been shooting all these movies. And uh, so I asked him one day, I said, hey, you know, would you like to work together on a film? He said, sure. So we built another set in the basement. And this set was, you know, basically one dimension, it was just a wall. And I spent a number of weeks building it and investing my heart and money in it. And we shot Mobius Trip, um, which uh, took us, you know, a number of months to shoot. I don't know, three or four months to shoot it out all together. We shot an hour's worth of film all together. And I incorporated a friend that I met at work, Chris Terrell, who himself is a avid science fiction buff. He's into it, so he's the kind of kind of guy for the part. Him and I, you know, uh, did a drinking scene to open up the uh, <coughs> open up the movie. And uh, I shot over an hour's worth of film for a Mobius trip. Um, unfortunately, I didn't use an hour. An hour of developing time costs a lot of money too. You know, the, the amount of money it costs to shoot Super 8 is just phenomenal compared to the amount of money you can use when you shoot uh, this stuff, uh, video. And uh, finally, after getting that edited, it came out okay. Well, here we are on the top of. Down Mount Quandry, right uh, Colorado. Right yep, one, two, and three. And Sherman down a ways further. Okay, this mountain just goes up, and, up one. and up, and up, and up, 14,000 some cut. feet. Yeah, Cameron, right. And this little mountain that's just a little bit lower than us right here along the ridge is Fletcher Peak. And the next one around is Pacific Peak. And, uh... There's the peak we climbed today. Here we go, here we go.
And uh, then I got another friend involved in the project, and uh, he himself has been shooting film for years. He has hours and hours, hundreds of hours of home movies, you know, so he has a lot of experience. So uh, we built the set and just started shooting, shooting it. Just, you know, it takes a long time to shoot a movie. You just don't shoot a movie. You, you have to uh, <laughs> work at it, you know. You know, planning and rehearsals, etc., etc., etc. And uh, so a year later, I'm still shooting it. Here I am in the Rocky Mountains doing some takes, and it's a lot of fun. I have help with my my father here. And, uh, I thought that the Rocky Mountains would have, would have a, an impact to the film. You know, ah. We did <laughs> some uh, shooting in the high. I know, um, a couple of days ago, hiked up to about 13,000 feet. Hopefully, when this film is all finished, it'll, it'll make a splash, I hope. You know, it is an amateur film. I am dealing with mostly imagination, not working for the script. But it is just imagination, so there's a lot of loose ends, unfortunately. But, uh, Given the time that it's taken to do this so far and the amount of hours the film has been shot, I think I have something that's going to work out. So I do have a little more I just fall in love. Okay. Instead of just going to the camera and coming back to sleep, I just latched on the old toilet paper. And I bring it back to bed with me because it's just so incredible. Uh, and as I get into bed, to show that everybody's affected by the stuff by now, um, you all wake up and go, <laughs> oh, right, man. And then you, you like you go back to sleep. It's like this moment everybody wakes up and thinks it's the funniest thing in the world. And then. Everybody else is discussing the UFO site. Yeah, we're at dinner, and the, the standard procedure of the day is after each day, we sit down at dinner and we talk about what happened, with our discovery, our thoughts and feelings, uh, results, whatever came up that has to do with our uh, our mission in space, okay? And uh, we're talking about the UFO and Anderson said, yeah, well, it was incredible because all the 917 senses Screaming over, and I said, you know, you know, the 1784 was, you know, on lit up too. And he said, yeah, that's right. But did you notice? And she says something like, well, you know, flowers are just so beautiful. I mean, I really like the blue ones, the red ones, the yellow ones. Yeah, that was little bit, uh, so how would I zoom in on you? No, I don't want you to zoom you in. You don't want me to zoom in. Okay. All right. Okay? Yeah. So I'm just going to come in. Why don't you press it? I'm, okay. No, no, don't, don't follow me. I just hold it still. I'm going to come in and stop. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. Press it so that you see the lines going across. Yeah, it just... Turn it off. Oh, I pressed the wrong thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I pressed the zoom. There we go. Okay, there's about where you had it. Okay, now I'm ready. Arrows are moving. Moving. Okay, so I'm just let, let, let it roll. Oh, it's rolling. Okay, I'm just going to come in slowly. Ah, the man who fell from Earth from his mind. Shut up. We're filming. Okay, cut. Cut. <laughs> Security! <laughs> Get that idiot off the set. Yeah. Against this, it's before the vapor or. Um... Well, you could, you could, you 
could say that it, it was in the environment at the same time she was still in the laboratory. It's, she didn't notice it because she wasn't looking for that kind of reaction. She didn't expect it. Like she's working on something else maybe by that time. Yeah, you know, on the, like a second and then, experiment yeah, or back something. And this might be like on a shelf and above her or something. And here she is. And this stuff is like, you know, in the closed space of the laboratory. But it's not making any noise or anything. So she's completely yeah, unaware of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, today is, um, see, February um, 7th, uh, 1993, it's a Sunday, and the time now is 11.45, and this is the uh, set that we're working on, so we're going to do a shoot today, and um, um, come on in, we're going to, let's just check it out for, for a little bit. See, I just put this up here today. And I got some white on the ceilings. I'm going to cover these with uh, styrofoam. Oh, uh, no, with uh, aluminum foil. Can you see pretty good? Mm -hmm. Can you see my hand? Okay. okay, let's take a walk inside. I know, I'm watching. Um, this is this is like kind of a, an evolution of insect building right here. It's taking me some time to get it where I like it. And um, we're just going to see what happens. One, roll them. So, man, you you interrupted us to tell us like about this. I mean, what is this supposed to be anyway? It looks totally strange. And now do the wake up. Uh, uh, at least deserves closer examination. Take your attention. Uh, Walk with you to Bachman and Ross. Rise and shine. This is now wake up time. busy working on it and you turn away or, or does it, does it, it, it takes a while for right, right. So it. Right.
last time that you really did any kind of work. We're going to do some work now. We're going to start to shoot. Um, a lot has happened since my last uh, work. Now. Some good things, a few bad things. Uh, when we come in and have a look at uh, some of the set, and uh, why don't you come on in and uh, mm -hmm. we'll take a tour through the, through the set. I'll, I'll grab this. And I'll take this to So we can't go very far. We can get to that. So here we are inside the set. Do some things right here and there's some for you. Okay. I'm gonna take a walk in the, in the set here. And uh, you can see that it's it's pretty much the same. Um, I added some some new things. I added a uh, couple of uh, negative uh, uh, negative x ray Place for uh, X-ray photos. Can remember to bend she down. Got for free at work. There you go. And bend I down when you uh, walk. stuck some uh, decal. Okay, great. Watch your heads now. Show. And um, it's pretty much the same thing. I added a some kind of a master. Which, uh, great. Looks super, man. Okay, come across. There you go, man. That's great. Okay. Okay, cut. And wave them around. Okay, I'm going to turn the light on now. Okay, ready? Turn it on. Okay, now, Chris, can you turn on the other light? So, we just come around this way. All right, great. Good take, good take. Okay, morning time. Whoops. Okay. Start taking your stuff off. Beautiful. This is great. Okay, now move out of the way quick, Jay. There we go. Okay. Great. Oh, that looks really good. The control center of the craft. This is the station. And, um... Looks okay. I think it looks pretty convincing. Some kind of thing control center, more or less, you know, um, when you, when you shine a black light on it, this is going to kind of light up some, because of some of the decals uh, glow and, uh, under uh, black light, which is really nice, I'm glad for that, very glad for that, so we can make it look like Okay, so so now what I want you to do is like sway yeah. side to side, and I'll and, and, and I'll bounce the camera up and down. Okay, this is great. Okay, well maybe now let's just just do some stuff with it. Okay, that looks really great.
Yeah, you can't figure out what's going on. No, something happened that's was very strange. Okay, yeah, you're looking out there, you're just kind of wondering, well, what's uh, what's it all mean? Hey, move, put your hand down, Jay. You don't have your gloves on. There you go. Okay, you're just kind of wondering what's what's it all mean. Now, I'm gonna focus in on each of your faces. Yeah, that's great. That's pretty good, man. I like that. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, I could just do this for hours. And... You know, I mean, we don't really realize the danger. I mean, we realize sort of on one level the danger, but not enough to make you think that we're completely intact. Because you have to preserve the idea that there's something wrong with us. Okay, okay. Um, we're talking about the uh, Yeah. No, they're not affected that much. It's, it's going to take a while still. We want to have solar solar plates which either come up this way or come out this way, which uh, help to give it the uh, energy while it's up there. And then I'm, I'm thinking about just getting a piece of uh, black cloth or backdrop and painting a half of a globe to represent the earth and um, then it's just a matter of shooting it in, in a way that, that makes it look like it's uh, floating of course that's still a ways off uh, and how that's going to be done well, I don't know uh, but anyway here it is we are under the we are finally reaching the, the final stages of this complicated movie uh, Cosmic abuse, which uh, is now in its gee second year of production, I think. Um, hopefully soon, uh, within the next week or so, we're going to begin shooting with Chris again. He's going to make it out here, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, start to polish this thing up and make it uh, kind of complete. Uh, after we shoot the, the scenes inside the, the uh, main control area, we have to shoot some scenes inside the uh, Israeli-Palestinian Green Line, uh, which will represent the end of the movie. And then after that, I think it's just a matter of editing it all together. So I'm looking at another year or so, or maybe even more, realistically. Because this is going to take a while to and then we have to shoot all the shots regarding the docking, uh, finding of the satellite in question, the redocking uh, when things go crazy, the emergency pod, uh, accidental ejection, uh, Jameson coming up and exploring inside of the ship. And I think it's uh, it's going to be still a while, you know, before we actually finish all that. And then I'll have a lot and lot of uh, footage. And then, like I said, it's on to editing, and that's going to be another year or so. So this is uh, May 22nd, 1994. Uh, Jason Washburn, the, the man behind the making of Cosmic Abuse. Compliments to cameraman Jay, Jay. Back. Back farther. That's pretty good. Well, not bad. I think that'll that'll do it for now. Okay, this is uh, April 14th, 1995. Um, Joseph Balin and myself, Jason Washburn, are now on one of the last stages of the shooting of Cosmic Abuse. And we're using models here. This is a um, representation of a space station. Um, it's called the Orbiter 1. And uh, it uh, took me a number of months to build. And uh, we have uh, a 
little little guys here that that I made, which represent the, the size, the basic size of the of the actual ship as compared to the human. And it's it's a pretty good sized ship, you know, for the size. Uh, I think it'll probably be about the size of a futuristic space station. Uh, and uh, we have a backdrop here of the Earth, which is painted on um, uh, Xerox copy um, machine uh, masters that uh, make the Xerox copy. I cut them up uh, half of a kind of a, a round shape, and then I paint it on uh, dirt and cloud and sea. And then we have a backdrop here of, of black. Yeah, right here, Dan. Yeah. And uh, it's going to represent the void of space. Um, and hopefully, this is probably this is going to be the last that we're going to shoot of this movie. Uh, we have a, a number of things that we want to shoot. We have to shoot um, another space station called Amnesty. And uh, then we have a little a little uh, emergency reentry pod, which we're going to sh use in the movie. And um, we have also what's called the outboard, which is the the um, kind of the shuttle, the go-between between, between the uh, other space station and this one. And uh, this is all new, very new for me to be uh, shooting miniaturization, so I don't really have much of an idea about what I'm doing except just lots of light uh, contrasted with lots of darkness, and hopefully it'll, it'll come out. And uh, here we go. This is uh, April 14th, 1995. Um, this is hopefully the last leg of this long, very, very, very long project that uh, Joseph Balin and myself have started out on a couple of years ago. And That's the thing. They're not infected. It's enough to make things a little peculiar, but um, yeah, you can you can slow yourself down. You still have to be serious, okay? This, this doesn't make you drunk. It affects your behavior in a really strange way. And you still maintain your very your, seriousness, because when the red light comes on, you get your suit on. You're going to die, because when the red light comes on, there's a malfunction. That's right. Period. And you're about to lose your atmosphere. And that's it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're drunk or not, or, or, or if you're infected. You're, the red light comes on, and you go. But I think you want to, I think you want to get across the idea that they're not responding as fast as they ordinarily okay. would. Yeah. They may respond appropriately, but I mean, the audience should be left in suspense that they're really going to get it together enough to figure out to put on their spacesuits. So we could have the red light go off and the noise, and then they kind of Yeah, I mean, it could be like, rrr, rrr, you know. And, and you Do guys you could be busy. Did you see the Andromeda strain? Where the and hopefully we'll be able to finish it up, you know, relatively soon. And um, then it's on to editing. Um, I never thought that I'd actually get this far in shooting this kind of a movie or actually bite off um, such a, a production. I had no idea that it, this whole production was going to be so long and uh, uh, so drawn out. Um, a movie of, of this kind really takes a lot of work. Um, basically, it's uh, the kind of thing you want to get paid for doing uh, because if you're doing it on your own, it's a lot of work, you know, especially if you're, you know, keeping down a 40 hour a week job. Um, it, it's been a lot of work, but it's been worthwhile because I've you know, been able to work with uh, Joseph Balin and been able to do a lot of the things that I really like to do, like model construction. And uh, hopefully soon it's going to be, um, it's going to be finished. Okay, it's good for now. Okay, record, okay, roll them. Well, I uh, would like to emphasize that uh, working on this project has been a source of great enjoyment for me and great personal fulfillment and tremendous satisfaction. Uh, it's very challenging, it's worthwhile, it's a very most effective way of expressing oneself and um, uh, working with very nice people has certainly done me a world of good and I've been able to develop more fully as well. So, uh, so I think this serves, serves a dual purpose. It's a, it's a very worth, worthy project, educational, and also it's, and for me, it's like a world of fun. 
and I would certainly look forward to more more of this in the future. Uh, it's like a very enjoyable occupation. It's about as best I can describe it in order to, in order to really fully uh, understand the uh, thrill uh, or the, the get the true benefits one would have to participate directly in this but I and Jason Washburn have uh, at least working with Jason has certainly been a tremendous advantage for me and with other people and I think uh, this is almost like the real thing or like the final trip or the ultimate trip or the extra an extra the extra dimension uh, it's like the, the like the final mission or they were the man's last adventure, last, the final frontier. And I, I feel as though we're participating directly in it. So I uh, don't know what else to add beyond this, except to, to really understand it, one would have to fully participate himself or herself. light on the white uh, basically fades everything in the back out so it looks looks pretty good really when you think about it um, and, um, all we have to do is just, just do a few things the, 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 the drug and the it had an effect on, on, on how you work it. so then I'm gonna because it's something that you love you love your job and it kind of it kind of is is, is a piece of love uh, that, that's what affects you takes away the aggressiveness, but what you love is your passion. So you love your job, you love your doctor, and you just really get into writing all these new ideas that are just coming into your head, and you just look, you're on the keyboard, and just, wow, and you're over there mapping, you know, right? and you're just like, wow, this is incredible, and you're putting your ideas, and then you're so involved that when the red light goes on, and the alarm goes on, you just, you know, and then, Space. Right now, I need to find some black thread. I know I have somewhere. I'm going to find it. I'm going to hook it up. This way. Anyway, we're, we're, we are making we are making bacon here. It, it is happening slowly but surely. Everything is on target, more or less. because you know that any minute this whole thing is going to explode and meanwhile yeah. I mean it's just like you know I think he has like 60 seconds and it gets down to like five seconds or whatever and he finally disables it or whatever but I mean you're going come on come on you know, like, as the suspense builds up the audience wonders just what will happen you, you 
because because in just a matter of seconds the disaster is imminent. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. of course, then the well, hero. Then, I mean, you, you guys can be really involved. Yeah, most convincing background and the incredibly uh, 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 detailed model of very, I think, would uh, convince the vast majority. It was very impressive indeed. Camera, please. <laughs> yeah, 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 and um. Yeah. And then that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's just something here we didn't catch on to. And that's it. We end the scene. Okay, we end the scene with just her, her comment and our reaction to her comment. And okay, then the next scene is, is I get up and they're all asleep. <laughs> okay, let's do, <laughs> let's do that again. Okay, ready? Okay, ready? This is take four. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, roll them. Okay, these, these, these numbers aren't knocking me out, right? You, you keep on looking for those. Most of them. Alright, cut. Five or six now? Six, six, Take six. six. Okay, roll them. Remember those charts you pulled up earlier? Yeah. Twelve. Roll them. Just me before anybody else. Just myself and Dr. Ross on them. Okay, roll them.
thumb together to one part of the ship so they can, you know, so you can get the idea that they both realized it and that they, you know, between the two of them, since they're both trained to, you know, to deal with emergency situations, it's like, Ross probably couldn't do it by herself and Anderson probably couldn't do it by himself, but with the two of them, it's like, Ross may notice, for example, that the light is on, the alarms are going off, that means that there's, there's going to be a loss of pressure or, you know, that there's oxygen escaping or something like that. And Anderson is meanwhile going, something caused this. Okay. Something is not right. We need to get Okay. Why not? Come on. Go. Follow me here. That's probably okay. Let's uh, basically work. The event's working. Yeah, it's, it's working. Okay, ready? Welcome aboard, sir. Glad to uh, have you. How was your flight? Very nice. Very nice. Come on, let me show you around and. Uh, it's quite a, it's quite a place, you know. They, they, they really put uh, a lot of, a lot of thought into this place. Yeah, so I know. Hello, kitty, kitty. Hello, kitty, kitty, kitty. Yeah. Stop that. You want something? Roll it. Well, we're glad to have you on board, sir. You guys had a good flight. Very excellent. Very well indeed. Okay. Hey, Walker, how you doing? All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, watch, watch your head right there. Okay. Okay. Come on. Let's go. No, 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 stop, cut, 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 cut. Now it's time. Roll him. Okay, are we ready? Okay, hold on, hold on. Do this. Uh, 321, Claire. Are you open on that? <clears throat> okay. Why don't you come in? Kind of zoom in, okay? From the back of me, all right? And get this part. Why don't you turn the light on too? Okay. So why don't you just kind of zoom in on this part, all right? Now pretend to press the button. Are you ready? Much stronger than I did. More, more on the side. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's great. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All righty. Okay. Walk around to the back. I'm going to move the door out, okay? You ready? Okay. Okay. So let me just run back through here and turn off the, off the machine. There we go. Okay.
That's great. You can't even see her face. That's great. Okay, that's great. Okay, we're coming down. Okay, ready? So put your hands down, Jay. Put your hands down. Okay, we're gonna take that over again. Okay, we're coming into orbit. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Break! Oh, no, no. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. You're coming in. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Parachute opens. You break down. No, no, no. Okay. Shake. You're coming down in. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. The parachute opens. There you go. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful day. And... I know, and you also have an industry. So stimulating. Wow. Yeah. And for a minute, it just kind of takes him away from all the, you know, Disaster. It's like they don't even thinking about what happened to Andrew Stevens. And I mean, the same with Wapinger. He's looking at this morning. Establish relations. Have a uh, time. Oh, okay. Don't even blow that. Blow a certain amount to, to, to give the impression that that there's that there was clothes on you. Hey, okay. you're free. Why bother burning the clothes? I mean, it's just an idea. Or what is it? Well, the question is, how can they feed into each other's hallucinations without triggering any kind of warning signal to the other person that there's something wrong? I mean, they, they have to be, like you said, they have to be sort of sharing the same hallucination because if one of them thinks you're in a hallway and one of them thinks you're in a jungle, then, you know, it seems like they would have some argument have about joint, some, what they're... Have what a they're joint, doing. have a joint yeah, it could be simple. It could be, um, what we could do is to go from like the after. So be wary. This? 1994. And here's the set for the next round of action. Hold it in front. Talking to the radio. Okay, whenever you want, Jay. Okay. Right there, not. Yep. Here I come. Three, two, one, roll them. Hey, something is not going right here.
lot of the uh, rabbit movement. Isn't it the, uh, the concentration of the jungle is so strong that it brings us back to bring the back to the point? Well, they could look out the window and not necessarily see the same thing, but it could be appealing enough that both of them would want to go outside. They don't necessarily have to agree, but I mean, if you look at it from a your standpoint, I mean, he might look out and recognize his front yard back home. You know, his car's in the driveway, his wife's out there watering the lawn and waving to him, and he's little kid talking across the lawn or something. And then, you know, what Bogman sees might be completely different. I mean, he might, he might, you know, look out and actually see like a, a vision of the beach or something. And they turn to each other and they go, "What a nice day! What are we doing here? You know, like, let's go outside. Yeah, you see what I see." Cut. You're rolling? Yep. Don't show my feet, okay? Okay, roll them. Or what we can do is, as, as you and Anderson are being pulled from the craft, you can brush up to Anderson and help some of the stuff get on him as well. Five, take two. Wonderful it is. Okay, now come, come in towards your, your right a little bit. There we go. Yeah, there we go. It's just such a beautiful expanse. You're just so proud to be an American astronaut. Okay, now you make like something's wrong. Grab, grab your headphones. Grab your headphones. Something's wrong. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Emergency. Emergency 1-9. Emergency 1-9. Uh-oh. Yeah, grab your headphones again. Grab your headphones again. Okay, put them on. Put them on. Okay, now pretend like you're talking to someone. Outbound. Say outbound. 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 Do you copy? Do you copy? Copy. Outbound. Do you copy? Copy. There's no response. Outbound. Do you copy? Look at you. Look out the window again. Outbound. Do you copy? Ten feet, we have five feet, three, two, one, stop. Okay. 
Okay. Everything's connected. We're safe. All right. You know, JP-173, you know. Roll them. All right, you guys, uh, welcome aboard, sir. Oh, cut. <laughs> Thing fell down, darn it. Three, two, one, roll them. Glad to have you guys on board. Welcome. 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 How was your flight? Oh, pretty good. All right. Okay, well, um... Eight, three, two, one, roll them. Okay, Bogman, we're coming into for docking. Docking procedure, procedure should be initiated. We're coming in at 30 feet, 20 feet. Okay, we're at 10 feet. Five, four, three, two, one, dock. Okay. Everything should be attached. Umbilicus attached. Okay. We're clear. We're safe. Right. It's a docking scene. Take nine. Three, two, one, roll them. Okay, Bogman, we're coming in. Docking procedure should be initiated. Okay. We're at 30 feet. Office director likely to be offered some other economic post. Neither Benson nor Panetta are seen as the new kind of Democrat that Clinton talked about throughout his campaign. Tom Mann of the Brookings Institution says there will be plenty of other appointments Clinton can make to signal an end to business as usual. The likely choice of Benson and Panetta means that he is putting a high premium on policy compatibility, on knowledge and political skills, ability to get something done, and on personal chemistry, and he's prepared to take some heat. Uh, knowledge of how to build winning coalitions. Okay, cut. Okay, I've got a little bit. So why'd you bring so much stuff with you? Well, you know, I'm going to be out here for 12 months, so i got to have all the toilet paper, candy bars, food, etc., you know, tools. Yeah. got to be prepared. You know, I'm bringing the doctor back with me in about a month. Yeah, I knew that. Um, you're also bringing the other two, aren't you? Well, no, they're coming by themselves. I didn't know that. So what does it like to crash into the Himalayas? How did you know about that? Well, everyone knows about that, man. Okay. <laughs> no. No, no. Yeah, it's something. You need to get the life support. And once you said life support, then you just back them. You're, you're back. Just boom, 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 boom. You're on. They're on. You got your training. Zip. No problem. You guys are, are okay. You got your, your suits on. Yeah, but the thing is. Hey, Jay. Crash rounds?
you have to get the cat out. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. This guy that I'm playing and the character that my friend's playing are going to get together. I'm the head of the uh, settlement and he's the head military officer. He's going to come and we're going to talk about some problems that we've had along the border, along the Palestine-Israel DMZ line. Um, same old situation, just a different day. Uh, Israeli-Palestinian issues. And it's an issue over disputed land that this whole thing is happening about because there's still the, the Palestinians and the Israelis have made peace somewhat. They have, you know, given back large tracts of land to the West Bank and even added some to Gaza. Since this is a futuristic film. And, um, but they're still disputing over land still, you know. They're still having disputes because one claims that his great-great-great-grandfather -great lived here and the other claims the same and so on and so forth. It's a, it's a headache. And, they're still fighting over this piece of land, this one particular piece of land. It's just a, along the Jerusalem Tel Aviv Highway. So this is where the story begins, and then from here we go out to um, the uh, border of the little settlement there, right along the Jerusalem Tel Aviv Highway, close to the Palestine Israel DMZ, DMZ line. And, um, meanwhile, a few uh, Arab characters are uh, out there sneaking in. And they're gonna do a they're gonna do a hit on the Israelis, you know. So there's there's these two characters outside who are sneaking in through the fence, and uh, they actually shoot one of the guys. They shoot me. I'm one of the guys who dies. And the other guy, the Israeli soldier, decides to go and pursue these guys, run off into the woods. And um, the Arab the the Arabs come across this helmet, which is in the woods just laying there and they find this the, they, they find that there's a very interesting scent in the air and they smell it for a minute or two and then they run off right and then the Israelis come up on uh, the Israeli soldier comes up on this and um, he sees it too and he smells the smell and but he stays there right and he just stays there and he's crouched down and he finds this stuff then all of a sudden he, he just kind of rises up like oh there's nothing there's, there's really no problem he just com completely forgets what he's doing because of the effect of the, hey doggy, get out of there, hey, get out of there. Because of the effects of the stuff that was on the helmet. And then he just stands there and he proceeds to light a cigarette. And from the back comes this Arab guy, walks up, and the soldier offers the Arab guy a cigarette. And then he offers another Arab guy a cigarette. And then one of the Arab guys whips out this little thing of grapes. And then that's the end of the movie. Which I hope to explain later on. I hope that the whole movie, when I finally get get it together and, and kind of get it edited and made, it's going to make a lot more sense. Because um, I've been having a kind of a filmmaker's block right now for the past oh, about six months, really. You know, haven't really gotten involved too much, but I have been thinking about doing this all this time ever since the beginning when I started shooting the movie. So here. I finally have arrived to shooting the last scene of the movie, and it is now January 22nd, 1995. Okay, end of the show. Do, 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 yeah. I think so. I think I they look. Oh, no, no. It's too, because it's dark. You can't really tell, you know? Why don't you stand over by the light? Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, you kind of have a. Um, Everybody else is discussing the UFO site. Yeah, we're at dinner, and the standard procedure of the day is after each day we sit down at dinner and talk about what happened, with our discovery, our thoughts, and feelings, uh, results, whatever came up that has to do with our uh, our mission in space. Okay. 
and uh, we're talking about sitting here all this time, kind of in the back, like so. And I gotta say, I gotta make a phone a phone call. Okay, so I'm gonna be moving around, getting up, and, and then I get on the phone, and there's some some, some crap happening on the phone, you know, some bullshit that I don't want to have to fucking deal with right now. And I got, and I'll bitch, I'll bitch for a little bit, and then and then I'll say, wait a minute, wait a minute, listen to this, listen to this. You can tell I just remember. Remember, oh yeah, you gotta listen to this, and I, get, and I go through my drawers, okay? Listen to this noise, and then we'll cut from there. Okay, okay great, great, okay. Let me just see how that looks. I have to do a quick little rewind kind of. Okay, ready? Ready. <clears throat> so I'll take it from the last two two lines. As uh, it said there, as anachnu halchim about ani tzarich lasot dvar kamet varim nitne tzarich lasot tzitzel. Did you get the house and this at all? No. 